This is the most powerful street in America, more powerful than Wall Street, Hollywood Boulevard, or Pennsylvania Avenue. The people who work on this street can make or break the financial fortunes of industrial empires. They choose the values that are promulgated through society, and they package and sell the political candidates we elect into office. It's Madison Avenue, home of the $160 billion American advertising industry, which fuels $2.5 trillion in consumer spending. Now, a lot of decent and honest people work in advertising, and at their best, they serve the public interest by informing us about the availability of rationally desirable products and services and the policy proposals of political parties and candidates. That seems like a good thing. But at its worst, advertising has a dark side that unconsciously manipulates a vulnerable public to buy things and ideas they don't rationally want. Now, that's not a good thing. And we have a name for that dark side of advertising. We call it spellcasting. The public sees it since 9 out of 10 Americans don't trust advertising, and they think it's filled with lies, and that there's truth in what Will Rogers said. Advertising, it's the art of convincing people to spend money they don't have for something they don't need. And boy, do they try to convince us. Did you know that the number of 30-second TV commercials seen in a year by an average child is about 20,000? And the number of TV commercials seen by the average person by age 65 is about 2 million? Add internet, print, radio, and in-store displays, and the number of ad impressions we see doubles or triples. And let's be real and candid. Most of those ads attempt to appeal to our subconscious and unconscious mind and bypass our rational thinking. But it's been a hit and miss proposition for the ad industry since there's been no reliable way to know if their voodoo magic is working, that is until now. Because of advances in neuroscience and medical technology, the spellcasters are now able to accurately pierce the human subconscious and unconscious veil. It's an Orwellian action which has the potential to inhibit human beings' conscious choosing, whether you're selecting a product, a service, or a politician, and turn us into a human-like Pavlov's dog. This disturbing practice is called neuromarketing, and even the industry says it's controversial. Neuromarketing is when the spellcasters use MRIs, EEGs, and other brainwave tools to view consumers' pre-conscious neural patterns, get into their thoughts and beliefs which even they don't consciously know, and ultimately tap into their reptilian brain to find out how to create unconscious and irresistible urges to buy their stuff. Imagine a world where companies could read our minds, too. Light beams may be a bit far off, but fMRI scanning is already being used to try to figure out what we want to buy and how to sell it to us. It's a new field called neuromarketing. One of its pioneers is neuroscientist Gemma Calvert, co-founder of a London company called Neurosense. Do you have a lot of clients? Yes, such as uh, Unilever, Intel, McDonald's, Procter & Gamble, uh, MTV or Viacom. That 60-minute piece is just the tip of the iceberg about what is happening on Madison Avenue. Working with MSense, Microsoft put EEG caps on gamers and showed them ads on the video game system. It tracked which parts of the brain were stimulated by the ads. Ads that excited several parts of the brain are supposed to make viewers more likely to go out and buy the product advertised, says Michael E. Smith, neuroscientist at Neurofocus, Forbes Magazine, November 16, 2009. Remember the commercial, Here's Your Brain on Drugs? Well, here's a brain being scanned while it's on a very powerful drug. The drug is a TV commercial. See the brain light up? That's the unconscious brain responding to stimuli. Spellcasters want to learn what turns us on inside and actually seduces us, which even we don't know about, and use that secret knowledge to sell us stuff. Do you think that's creepy? The moment you know emotional engagement and memory retention, you extract from that purchase propensity or purchase intent or persuasion, or how are you seduced by the trailer enough to go watch the movie? Are you seduced uh, enough by the promo to watch the show? Are you seduced enough by the ad to go buy the product? We extract this very precisely. How does that video make you feel? Do you feel good inside knowing that companies are trying to read your thoughts and feelings and to what degree you are unconsciously seduced by an ad, a trailer, or a promo? The concerns about neuromarketing are well documented. Just Google it. You'll find articles from Forbes, Business Week, Commercial Alert, Frontline, and others exposing the unethical dark side of neuromarketing. And neuromarketing isn't being used just by consumer product companies. Politicians are also in on the game. 
There's no doubt about that the politicians are incredibly interested in this. Now, first of all, let me say one thing. I don't think any politician will admit that they're using it if they're using it. Of course they won't. That will really you know, be a guarantee for them losing the entire election. So I think that by election 2012, we will see the whole polling take place using fMRI or partly using fMRI. If politicians are going to use it to craft a campaign, Guess what? I don't think we're going to find out. I think they'll always keep it as a secret. Neuromarketing is, in fact, already being used to create more effective political propaganda to unconsciously manipulate the unsuspecting voter. Political campaigns spend millions of dollars on ads trying to get into the minds of voters. Now, there's cutting-edge technology that can literally show what people are thinking, and the campaigns are taking notice. Earlier show national correspondent Jeff Glor is live in El Paso, Texas with more. Jeff, good morning. The question is how they really respond to these ads versus what they tell pollsters. And that's why we have Kim over here who's undergoing a live brain scan. She is watching political ads right now and the doctor is reading her results. We need to wake up to what is happening and stop neuromarketing. If you agree, join with the World Business Academy, its founder, Renato Brutico, and its 80 fellows who include some of the world's leading figures who are rekindling the human spirit in business, including Hazel Henderson, founder of Ethic Mark. Join with us and help us put an end to this unethical and creepy practice. Here's how. First, sign the online petition at ethicmark.org asking politicians and companies to not use the unethical practice of neuromarketing. And please do so now. We need your help. And second, join the Academy's Ethicmark communities at Facebook and Twitter so we can let you know which politicians and companies agree to not use neuromarketing and which ones choose to be spellcasters and continue to think unconscious manipulation is ethical. And when you know that, you can make a truly conscious decision about where you want to spend your money and cast your vote.